this video I would like to talk about concatenation of tables and in particular the concatenate prefix. To concatenate means joining together or linking two things. In the case of ClickSense, concatenate means linking two tables. Be aware that there is also a function called concat, which is actually a string function for joining string strings together. Also, do not confuse concatenate, which is a way of row-wise linking tables with join, which is a column-wise way of linking tables. Let's have a look at the syntax of the concatenate prefix. First we load one table and then we say concatenate table 1 with table 2. This will result in a table which adds all the rows of table 2 to table 1. The name of the resulting table will always be the name of the first table to load, that is table 1 in this case. It is good practice to provide the table 1 argument to the concatenate prefix. However, if we do not provide an argument to the concatenate prefix, ClickSense will automatically use the previously loaded table. So this will result uh, in the same resulting table. Pay attention to a very special behavior of ClickSense. If we load two tables after each other that have the same column names, ClickSense will automatically concatenate these two tables, which can cause a lot of confusion. Let's have a look at a code example. Okay, let's say we have two tables of Tesla stocks, one table containing all the values of 2012 and one table containing all the values of 2013. And we would like to concatenate these two tables in one long table. We can do that by the concatenate prefix. And if we want to follow good practice, um, also write the argument Tesla 2012. Let's load this data and see if that works. Okay, it results in one long table of 502 rows of all the values together. However, uh, as mentioned before, if the two tables that we load have the same column names, ClickSense will concatenate the two tables anyway. Let's try that by commenting out the concatenate prefix. And we see again, this re it results in a, in a table of 502 rows. So the two tables were concatenated again. This only works if all the column names are the same of the two, column, of the two tables. If we, for instance, delete one of the columns, for instance, year, the uh, ClickSense will not automatically concatenate the two tables. So we see here it created two different tables with a lot of overlap in the column names. That's why there's a synthetic key, which looks like that. But we can force concatenate the two tables, even though not all of the column names are the same by using the concatenating concatenate prefix. Let's try that. And again, the result of, is a long table of 502 columns. And we see that the, in the top of the table, we still have the Tesla 2012 values and the year is missing. And now I would like to demonstrate why I don't like the way of ClickSense to implicitly concatenating tables without me explicitly writing a command for it. For example, we would like to load this Tesla 2012 table and we would like to order it by the high value. We can use the order by statement only from a already loaded table. So we need a resident load. We would do that by loading the table again as a resident statement.
and say order by high. This we call new table. And after we have created this new table, we don't need the 2012 Tesla table anymore, so we drop it. What I usually would expect would be the load creating um, a table called new table, which is ordered by high. Let's see what happens. X is not allowed. So what actually happened here? Since Tesla 2012 and my new table have the same column names, ClickSense will automatically concatenate these two tables and call it Tesla 2012. Then I drop the table 2012 and nothing is left. So the data model is empty. This happened to me like a hundred times. In my opinion, the developers of ClickSense should change this behavior. I hope you liked this video and see you next time.